Hmm. I find myself whenever I'm starting a class, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, hmm. <laughs> I like that. I want to invite you to just find a satisfying, hmm. For me, I, I, I resonate with kind of the best of wonder and curiosity inside. And then I open to curiosity about what's going to happen. And uh, as I'm looking out, I'm seeing some folks I recognize and seeing some folks I don't recognize. I want to welcome all of you. And I wanted to appreciate you, Michelle, for coming up with this whole idea of the Big Leap Bridge classes and for stewarding it and creating this, you know, this wonderful archive that we have now of so many different skills that are available to people. And um, this is one of the things that our foundation, our nonprofit foundation, uh, the Foundation for Conscious Living does is support these classes to give us a chance to share in community with each other about things we think might be of interest to your well-being and your relational skills and, you know, just you're having a good time in life. And earlier in the summer, I thought, you know, nobody ever really talks about the power of letting go. And we, we kind of get some of that ushered in through the act of forgiving. <clears throat> and forgiving is actually letting go of. Uh, but we wrap all kinds of other things around that. And so what I wanted to share with you tonight are some random thoughts about letting go, but also some practices that have been very effective for me to experience the benefits of letting go. So I want to say a couple of words about letting go. But even before I do that, I'd like you to think about the last period of your life, <clears throat> really for as far back as you want to. And I'd like you to name, if you can, one to five things that you have had trouble letting go of. And that could be anything from stuff, you know, like a blanket that you had when you were a kid. Um, you know, I had a, a little case that my aunt gave me when I was 13 years old and I still had it when I was in my early 70s. So uh, that was something that I deliberately chose not to let go of. But things that, you know, in the area of stuff, but I think that in the area of our communications with others, things that have happened to us, hurts, um, expectations, things that didn't work out, things that we wish had gone another way. So just what you're bringing with you that is in the realm of letting go know that you've tried to let go of and you can't let go of it or other people want you to let go of it and you don't want to let go of it so you know just all of that um, so that when we're doing our activities today you'll have something to refer to like when I say oh it would be great to have something to play with here this will be your playlist and things that uh, you're willing to play with so I'll just give you a, another minute or so for that I've found with letting go that whether it's a big thing or a little thing, the act of letting go has great power. So it doesn't have to do so much with the content, although I have found the content, especially of what goes around in my brain, really changes when I let go. Uh, and so that's one of the benefits that I find um, and I also want you to consider if you've had any models in your life of graceful letting go of people who have been able to just easily let go. And what was it about them or about what they were doing that that really touched you or impressed you? You thought, wow, that's a <laughs> wow, that's a skill that um, I didn't even know was possible you know, to let go of things, because so much of our stories are about the feud, the grudge, the thing that happened that you still feel 50 years later, uh, and that the holding on becomes a kind of a reflex. But letting go is a skill that 
I, I was never taught. I don't know if you were ever taught to to uh, let go in any kind of effective way. So I wanted to share with you that I first saw the really kind of astounding, miraculous letting go in watching Gay, my husband Gay, for those of you who have not yet met him, and if you haven't, I want you to arrange to meet him really soon so that you can uh, really osmose his uh, particular wild wisdom. He, uh, when we first got together in his former relationship, he uh, had bought a house with this woman. And when, when we got together, she was hassling him about, she wanted the house and, and he just gave her the house. He just let go of the house. And it was like, no, no big deal. And he did that in the face of us, not us, not having a house. <laughs> we were, uh, uh, and so there, you know, my old scripts about the way that one does something, you know, like I came from the first you save up and then when you have enough, you get the thing that you want, but you're, you're monitoring and you're looking ahead, but it doesn't have anything to do with just letting go. And very quickly after letting go of that house, we found this wonderful house that we rented and then the next one, and then we bought a house and there, it, it was like, it, it was just like, you know, I'm going to the store to get some cereal and I'm going to give the house away. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so I studied that for really a long time. Like, did he really, didn't he have any feelings about it or didn't he have any arguments inside or didn't he reconsider? Nope. So it was really this, this, this letting go and then what occurred after that was open space. So for a lot of us, if we're letting go, especially if it's a letting go, that's a kind of forgiveness. There's, you know, there's a little tug of it that we hold on to and say, well, I'm, you know, I still feel mad about this or, you know, I'm going to forgive you except for that. And uh, so that the letting go is really not a free flow into open space. So I want you to consider whether you would be willing to learn the art of the easy letting go, just easy letting go. And notice what comes up when you consider that, what comes up inside. And that may be a clue to what is still holding on to you that's not allowing you to have that ah, moving into open space with no agenda, that, that freedom of like no obligation there, uh, you know, in that particular situation, there was no way for her to sort of come back and say, well, you didn't do it because there were, so there was no argument. There was no, uh, you know, struggle. There was just a letting go. And uh, I, I love the, the, somatic model that I got from that, the feeling of what is possible if you let go. And my sense is that what's possible if you learn how to let go is magic. That the magic of manifesting what you want, the magic of, of being available to receive, you know, this or something better uh, comes when you're not busily holding on. You know, we have the whole, the Zen story of, you know, the the, the teacup that's full, you know, that can't receive anything because it's already full. And the, the equivalent for us are something that we get from holding on. So with one of these items that you have not yet let go of, I'd like you to just consider it and then notice your body sensations and notice what am I getting from holding on to this, you know, like what's the payoff? Um, so for me, some of the things that I've held on to, I, you know, I get to feel sad and I get to feel like a victim all over again. You know, like he did that thing and it was really bad and I felt bad and he never really considered how bad I felt. Now I'm going to just hold on to this until he feels bad. <laughs> uh, so Whatever your, you know, it's always this crazy logic, but whatever the logic is, let yourself just consider what's the payoff that you get for holding on. 
Now, all of this is kind of in the realm of content, you know, the stuff that you're holding on to. But I also would like you to consider how you hold on. Because you might hold on like you clutch things to you. You might hold on like you drape things over you or or like Marley's ghost in Scrooge. He's got a bunch of chains, invisible chains that are tied to his ankle of all of the things that, you know, he didn't let go of. So notice also when you consider holding on, what part of your body do you most hold on in? I think a lot of people hold on in their shoulders. They sort of pull it and it's like, you know, jaw, yeah, jaw and shoulders, you know, which would let me know that there's probably we're holding on to old anger. Uh, and, but it could also be old burdens, you know, like I never got acknowledgement for that burden that I carried for so long. Like I, what just popped into my mind was my, um, when both of my parents were dying, my brothers basically went AWOL. I mean, they literally disappeared. And so I took care of, I chose to take care of my parents in the last five years of their life. But boy, that would have been a great one to hold on to because like, they didn't do anything, you know, and and then when the estate, when it time <laughs> time came to split up the estate, they showed up again, Glorioski. So there are, um, I definitely could have held on there, and um, but I I just let go. And sometimes when you let go, like when I let go, I haven't I haven't seen my younger brother. I actually don't even know where he is in about fifteen years. So when you let go, it can be a, you know, the off they go into another realm. And uh, so that is one of the things that can happen with letting go is that, okay, I've let go and <laughs> that's over. So the other, one of the other things that occurs to me is that we hold on because we don't want to face that something is over or finished or moving in another direction. And I've had that experience with people that I've really liked and that I've been working with. And then I can feel them pulling away or turning their attention in another direction. But I can feel me still like, oh, I still want something from them. So that I, I can feel that in the middle of my back, but also with my hands is sort of reaching out, but also a holding back at the same time which can take me into old memories of where I first had that experience of reaching out and then not being reached for and having a big incomplete there in some need uh, that didn't get met. So I think often we're holding on because we're still thinking we're gonna get it. Get we're it. still thinking we're gonna get that thing that we didn't get, you know, like the attention or the caring. And, uh, you know, like in, in my life, I was always going to be number two, no matter what I did, yeah. that was not going to change. So letting go for me also involved letting go of my labeling of myself and what was possible and not possible from that label. So I'm just wanting to give you a frame of how complex um, how interwoven our holding on and our letting go are and how much benefit I've had. I was just seeing in my mind another example of letting go um, from Gay. He's who's written over 40 books. I've written 12 with him, but he's, you know, he writes, you know, like a book a year and some sometimes m m much more than that because he's got like six or seven books in the pipeline right now that haven't uh, come out yet. And when he, when a book comes out, you know, when it arrives from the publisher, we open it up and he goes, oh yeah. And he puts it down and then off he goes. He has literally let go of the book. It's just not, and I can see it's just not there in his consciousness. You'd have to go back to look at the book to see what was in it, you know, too. Because <laughs> people say, well, you know, remember on page 54 and you go, mm, nope. Uh, and, but it also saves you that whole remember when in my, it recently in my life, what, um, someone will say, remember when, and I say, nope, you know, I've let go of that. I mean, I literally have let go of the interaction, the thing that happened, 
because otherwise I get so clogged up with all of the, the who said what and when did they and who did what. Uh, and in the letting go, when I show up for my next interaction, I have all of this open space and availability to presence what wants to happen here and now. And so for me, that also leads to what I call living in completion, that I do my best in each interaction to consider that it's the last interaction that I'm ever going to have with that person. So I don't wait. Like if I see something, you know, I'll, I'll bring it up. If, I, if there's something going on for me, I'll share it. And that arises because there's nothing in the way of me having those awarenesses. So one of the benefits of letting go is that you get to open up to this flow of consciousness that comes through you from the universe through your particular instrument. And those impulses, those impulses for me that arise from within, I always find great joy and benefit from following those uh, because they, they come up in the timing of the moment. When you're not letting go, I find that my timing is off. I'm sort of not in the right place at the right time. And I'll say something, but the other person doesn't understand what I'm talking about because, you know, that happened so long ago that they don't have any reference. So we anchor ourselves, I think, through holding on. It becomes a way of grounding, uh, you know, like how you can identify all of the classic feuds you know, if you also you think of Romeo and Juliet, that is a drama about people not being willing to let go. It's also a drama of secrets, uh, but it's it's also not people not willing being willing to let go of some kind of a, you you offended me and I'm not ever going to let you forget it. So our letting go of our feelings, you know, old uh, grudges. So let me just take a look at my list here of the things that I've got. Um, At the bottom, or, or tied up around holding on, my sense is um, a particular kind of fear. And those of you who've been around the last few years know that I've uh, put a lot of attention into befriending fear because it is such a block to our presencing and connecting and collaborating with others. And I think there's a particular kind of fear and a gestalt that happens when we're not willing to let go. And that's one thing I invite you to be curious about by noticing what's going on in your body. And I'm going to be asking you to do different things. So when I was asking you, like, where do you hold on? And even if you don't know that, I'd like you to just make a guess. And I'd like you to let your body hold on the way that you do in your mind. So I'd like you to let your body just exaggerate beautiful, the way that you hold on, make it bigger, wonderful. And then you can see like, uh, like Nancy, yours looks like a fight. So the fear that's most associated is a fight. So notice if it has more of a Oof, is, is your holding on like if you didn't hold on, you would just fly away? Does yours have a kind of, you know, holding on going into the middle of you? Uh, does it have a, 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 if I don't hold on, I'm just going to disappear and go down the drain and faint and be overcome? So what you, I'd like you to do now is to go into that exaggeration of your holding on and I'd like you to just very gradually add some fear melters into that area. You can feel, does it feel more like oozing wants to move through there or rooting where you're letting a flow of the earth come up through your body and open up space? Does it feel more like a wiggle? If uh, It may be a combo too. It may not just be one, but let yourself just gradually let this love scoop. Does it feel like it just, you just would like to have some loving attention for that part of you? 
So it could be that you're angry and you want love scoops too. <laughs> so they, they, you know, all of those contradictions can go together. So when you liberally let that place in your body have fear melters running through it, I'd like you to, while you're doing the fear melters, can you feel, notice the thing that you're holding on to? Does it loosen up at all? Like sometimes I forget what it was I was holding on to. <laughs> Is it literally, poof, off it goes. And as we're experimenting, if you have a little aha, an image comes to you or a memory or a song or a tone, jot it down because that's your inner landscape speaking to you. That's your body wisdom speaking to you. And you can come back to that later as you're playing with what, um, how these all, all of these things might relate. So we're called in life to let go of little things, but also to let go of really big things, letting go of relationships, you know, letting go of people, letting go of houses. Uh, we, um, I, I was just reflecting today that we, um, we had a fire here in, uh, gosh, it was a December of maybe 18 or 19. I forget which year it was. I think maybe it was 18. And we were in Singapore when the fire broke out. And it, was, it ended up being a huge fire, incredibly destructive. And uh, we had someone here taking care of the cats. And she said, uh, well, I'm going to evacuate. We're going to go down because we don't know if... Ojai is going to, there were two nights when Ojai almost burned down. So um, we said, well, take the cats and the computers and, <laughs> and go. And I, and I didn't realize till I got home that uh, I hadn't considered my jewelry, my heirloom jewelry, my, you know, my clothes, my photos. It was just take the computers and the cats. And so there was this, just this feeling of, oh, I could just e have easily let go of all of that. And so it gave me a perspective of, uh, you know, from, you know, because I had still, there are things I've held on to, like I have files that are still go back to um, the uh, riots of the, the 1968 and 1969 uh, that were a precursor to um, uh, us uh, ending the Vietnam War. So there are a lot of, and files from our, uh, from our early contracts. And it's been good that I held on to those because uh, I've been able to use them recently. So also calculating what am I going to let go of and what am I going to hold on to and how do I make that criteria? So what I'm really interested in is your ability to let go. So I want to play with some things. And one of them is one that you might be familiar with. Um, the... Um, I'd like you to get your pen or your pencil or your chalk or whatever it is you're creating with right now. And I'd like you to pick it up and hold on to it. And I'd like you to have the pen be one of your items. And, you know, if you're holding on to it, you know where it is. You've got it. You know, you, you've got control of it. You know, you can use it. You know, you might need it sometime. So just notice what it's like to hold on to it. Now, notice that you can't do anything else with that hand because you're holding on. And, and just notice the holding on. I'm holding, yeah, I'm holding on. And then just notice if you're with your item, do you have any righteousness or any I'm right? Or I'm going to hold on to this because nobody else will, you know, those kinds of things. And let yourself exaggerate that a little bit. I notice as I'm doing that, that my hand is getting a little sweaty <laughs> from all of that holding on with attitude. And then I'd like you to just simply open your hand and let go. And notice what it's like to have an open hand that has recently been holding on to something. And notice the difference between that hand and the hand that hasn't been holding on to something because I can still feel the imprint of the pen. 
And my sense is that with things that we've just let go of, we still feel the imprint. And the temptation then is to pick it up again because it's so familiar. And so go ahead and pick it up again. And I just had a little, like I'd gotten my baby blanket or my bottle. I got it again. I've got it. <laughs> and so that sense of safety or <clears throat> or control. This is something, you know, I've got it now. If I let go of it, what's going to happen? So notice, I'm noticing too that I'm having, I'm left-handed and I have this in my left hand. So I want to invite you to shift your pen to the other hand. Hold on with your other hand. Now, when I'm holding on with my right hand, which is not my, is my non-dominant hand, it feels really different. It's not quite as satisfying. It's like, I'm holding a pen, so what? You know, it's like, God, why are you holding on to a pen? Whereas when I have it in my left hand, it's like, this thing is really important. This is my lifeblood here. I'm not letting go of it. So you might actually just shift a little bit from one hand to the other. Notice what it's like to hold. I can't even quite do it. My right hand feels sort of awkward doing it, but my left hand just goes boom right into a holding. Yeah, so just play with that for a little bit. Notice the difference. And also notice how the rest of your body reacts. When I, when I have my left hand holding, I get more sort of up and forward. My chest comes forward. I kind of get, oh, with my a gorilla brain and over on this hand it's kind of like you oh. know it's like a dance that i qu don't quite know how to do and it feels a little awkward so notice now put it in your non-dominant hand and let yourself hold on to it the thing and then just let go and notice even though this is my non-dominant hand, there is a there was a little bit of a ah, breeziness for me. My hand felt this kind of ah, more liberation to move in different ways. So letting go can be that easy. And I like to have something, it might be a ball, because if it's a ball, I can kind of squish it and you know get some of my emotions into it. Um, but with a pen, one of the things I like about a pen is it's often our logical brain that's saying, oh, you might need that. Now, are you sure? Did they really pay you back? Did they pay everything? If you don't hold on, how will you know? If you don't keep the records, how will you know? So it's often our logical brain, which is one of the reasons I like the pen. So if you let go of your logical brain, what opens up? So with your item, what opens up when you let go? <clears throat> so this is my go-to. You know, if I'm I, like I'm in the airport and I found that my plane has been delayed and then it's been delayed some more, <laughs> you know, so letting go of, you know, the place I'm supposed to get to. And the, so to have something that's actually allows me to anchor just the act of, okay, all right, that's not happening. And in a way, it's kind of a mini version, <clears throat> excuse me, of F-A-C-T of facing, accepting, choosing, and letting go, I'm letting go, of choosing and taking action. And in this sense, the, the letting go would be the action. And the going through FACT, which we have on the website, by the way, in, on the foundation website, if you're not acquainted with FACT, we have a module uh, in our restoring resourcefulness um, area that is called FACT. And it will show you how to use this really incredibly valuable tool. And um, I'd like to run through just a quick version of that that uh, will allow you to play with letting go of an item. 
So you can choose the item that you were just working with or uh, another if you would like to explore something else, bigger or smaller. Because often it's the mosquito-y ones that are really irritating. You know, like we've had, uh, we had an infestation of flies with flowers that came in a couple of weeks ago. And just when I thought I'd gotten rid of them, another one would show up. And so those, uh, when those kinds of little things happen, you might think, oh, well, I should really be able to let go of that. But letting go can be just as challenging, whether it's, you know, whether it's a house or a marriage or, or a fly. And the act of getting some facility at letting go really, I think, involves involving your whole body. So what I'd like you to do first is put your item first, well, choose your item that you're going to play with. And then I'd like you to put it somewhere in the room around you, just your, in, with your imagination, I'd like you to put it somewhere. And then I'd like you to play with turning toward it and turning away from it and just turning toward it. And you can use as much of your body as you like, because if you use your whole body, that's great. And also if you're using any part of your body, it really activates all of your body wisdom. So then the way that you might turn away from it is focusing on something else and distracting yourself. You might, um, when you face it, you might turn away from it by sticking it in a drawer someplace. So let yourself just play with the ways that you turn away from this thing that you're holding on to. And then I'd like you to go ahead and turn to face it and just doing your best to let yourself open up to turning completely toward it. And like you just ask yourself, take a couple of easy breaths, because I find also that holding on takes my breath away. And that when I open and turn toward, I get more breath. And ask yourself, what's the hardest thing about this for me to let go of? What's the hardest thing for me about even considering letting go of this? And then just notice what comes up. It may not be words. It may be a feeling. It might be a memory. It might be a sound or an image uh, from something or a lyric from a song. And if something does come up, I'd like you to take just a moment and jot that down so that you'll have it because we're going to run through this one. We're going to just dance through this one pretty rapidly. <clears throat> one thing I've added to FACT in recent years that I really like is with accepting. Because accepting, so first I face, and then I the acceptance of like, today is Tuesday, and I'm still holding on. So the accepting, I think, works really well if I have one hand be, I'm willing to let go, and I'm not. And the other hand is, I am not freaking letting go of this thing ever. They did this to me. They were so wrong, and I'm never going to forget it. So I'm willing to let go, and I'm not. And I'm willing to let go, and I should let go. Uh, I'll let go, but next week. So let yourself play with, I want to accept and I don't. And just notice what it's like for you to actually bring all of those excuses and thoughts out of the woodwork. You know, I'm willing to and not, not gonna. I know it would be good for me and I don't care. So you're really allowing accepting to be uh, a, a a dynamic rather than a linear path. I have found with FACT that I come back to facing and accepting a lot. So you're not going to just march through to facing, accepting, choosing, taking action. Uh, so there may be like, oh, a whole other aspect of that that comes to your awareness that you hadn't seen you hadn't opened up, you hadn't faced like, oh, that was the only thing that I really ever got from my grandmother. Uh, if I let go of that, what will I have to remember her by? So, and then the sadness that comes with that. 
So it allows you to go, oh, and then facing what's the hardest thing to face about that? Well, that she's gone. Well, is she really gone or is she in me? If I hold on to this thing, she's not really gone. So going through FAFA is a very natural part of the letting go process. Now for choosing, I'd like you to let yourself create some, just some easy moves. You might do fear melters, but just kind of uh, moving your body in some new ways that you haven't. And let yourself open up to that. Ah. And letting yourself consider, what do I really want? One of the things I like to do also with choosing is to combine wondering about that with essence pace. So those of you who know essence pace, moving around in a pace that feels easy to you uh, often opens up what you really want. So Essence Pace is also on the foundation website if you want to um, explore that. But choosing for me involves opening up to new possibilities. And so if I start that in my movement, so like I'm, I'm moving my body in some new ways that I haven't while I'm wondering about what I really want, that begins to unlock some of the rigidity that we have around letting go. And then the, what I want, oh, one other thing about what I want, we'll often start with what I don't want. And so if that's come up for you, notice, go, oh, okay. And, you know, thank yourself for bringing up, oh, no, I don't want that again. Yeah, great. And so what do you want? So you can use, what you don't want is a kind of a trampoline to jump into and what do you want? And I find that if I've been holding on for a long time, what I really want doesn't come very quickly. You know, I really, I come to it several times. I might put on some music that I really like and let myself move around while I'm wondering, what do I really want? Or I might choose something like something that I really love to eat. Like right now I'm really wild about Bar Barney's almond butter. And I might get, uh, choose a bite of almond butter. Notice what it's like to choose that, to have what I really want and the feeling of having what I really want. And then asking myself, what do I really want about this thing that I've been holding on to? And then taking action I like to move around uh, and either move around with my breath or move around outside, take a walk where I'm really thinking about, hmm, what's the simplest action that I could take that's going to begin to move toward letting go? Now, you could just do, you know, pen drop. But if it's an item, if you do that and it is like, nah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no juice there then let yourself consider what's the simplest thing that's going to lead me toward the kind of letting go that's going to open the most space for me inside. So FACT, I find incredibly valuable when I'm looking at some uh, the whole act of letting go. And I've had this, um, some of the hardest things for me to let go of are friendships that I thought were, you know, I had an expectation that we're going to be there forever. And then the other person is not there. They've let go, but I haven't. Or they may not have let go. I don't know what they've done, but they're not there, you know, or their energy is removed, but I still have not let go. So I'm you know, still kind of following them energetically, you know, down the lane. I wanted to, so that's FACT. I also want to show you the other uh, tool that we use a lot, uh, which I think really applies to letting go, is uh, something we invented years ago that we call unhooking the source, but I call it that was then and this is now. So our holding on is in the past. So anything that you're holding on to is not current. 
because in this moment, you're in order to hold on, you have to do something right now to hold on. So noticing that that thing is in the past. So with the same item that you were just playing with, I'd like you to, this actually, this one works best if you're standing. <clears throat> so I want to invite you to, to, uh, to stand. You don't, you know, you don't, I'd like you to be able to hear me. You, you can move to a, a place where you have enough space. And I'd like you to let your body tell you which direction is the past. And I'd like you to let yourself point to the past and say, that was then with one hand. And then with the other hand, I'd like you to turn to the present and say, this is now. So with one hand, that was then, and this is now. And here's the fun thing to play with. Emphasis and pace. So playing with that was then, and this is now or that was an, and this is now. And emphasis, that was then. And this is now. And what I'd like you to do is to play with this until you feel a shift in yourself of an opening to releasing, an opening to letting go. So for each of you, that timing is going to be a little bit different. But um, when we're just sampling it now, but when you're playing with it at home, I'd love for you to play with it until you actually experience a shift. Some of the things that people experience is more breath. There might be a wave of feeling, because even though you're letting go, there may be a wave of sadness, which is your you know, you're releasing of, uh, of something that you've been holding on to for a long time. Uh, so it doesn't mean that you're going to feel whoopee. It means that you'll feel a shift where you experience more choice. I experience colors more vividly. I actually notice more space. And I also have a sense of that was then. It doesn't mean it didn't happen or that I don't have feelings, but that's then. And this is now, I'm in now. So when I shift into now, then I really do have more choice. So these two are go-tos for me that, and with clients and friends that I use frequently together, F-A-C-T and, um, and that was then, and this is now. There's also, that's their business and this is my business. But I think for this one, it's really, that was then. And this is now. And then, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. You know, I didn't get it. I didn't get the thing. You know, everybody else got the thing, but I didn't get the thing. And so then F-A-C-T with what's the most difficult thing about that and accepting that you feel sad or that you still feel angry and that there might be a choice, there might be a communication that you want to make that will facilitate you letting go. Because also letting go, particularly letting go when we're talking about forgiveness. I'm not a real fan of forgiveness because I think it's gotten contaminated with like a lot of other of uh, actions that could be valuable. It's got a lot of baggage on it. So I really prefer letting go to forgiving because that's really is at the heart of forgiveness is letting go. And when I let go, I'm not carrying around a lot of stuff. I literally get freed up from caring. And I think how uh, forgiveness and letting go are related is that we don't forgive because we have not felt. There are emotions, uh, interactions, communications that are incomplete. 
And that as I let myself feel the anger, express the sadness, communicate about the thing that I regret, then I open space to be able to release, to be able to let go. So these are, I consider it a kind of a dance. And uh, I'm getting much more skilled at letting go of things. Um, uh, and I have a great model in, uh, for, uh, in gay, but I also realize that along the way, my discernment about what to let go of and what to hold on to has also been very valuable. So this is not the baby with the bathwater uh, move, but really an act of unwinding and untangling and you no know, letting go. And it may be that you're letting go of one strand at a time and feeling what that's like, and you do it over a period of time but it will come from your own choice and your own body wisdom and your own being loving to yourself rather than, well, I guess we should just let go now. And, you know, forgiveness is the thing that you do and then you get to move on. But if it, if it's really deep in you, you know, there are a lot of tendrils that are tender and, you know, maybe attached to other things that you really are not yet willing to let go of. And uh, so I find that really good to know, like, no, I'm not ready yet. No, I still feel mad about that. I'm going to feel mad a little bit longer. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm choosing it rather than somebody making me choose that. Uh, so this is not, not designed to, you know, give you a recipe, but more to, to give you choices that I've found valuable and people that I have shared this with, have found valuable. Radical letting go gives you a radical amount of space. So just letting you know, like when Gay let go of that house, it was like, whoa, I, you know, I spent the next year rearranging my worldview you know, about what was possible. And uh, wait a minute, everything I think I know is wrong about how the world works. And it was incredibly freeing. Uh, and my tendency, you know, coming, my, my parents grew up during the depression. So I had the residue of their, you better hold on to it because you never know when you're going to need it. And the scraps of paper and the rubber bands and all of the things in the drawers, because you just never know when you're going to need it as compared to, well, just let go. <laughs> and, and then resources actually can appear. So it, it's a, uh, the radical form is not for everybody, but it is it is actually really cool. It's really fun. So let me look at my notes here, make sure I'm getting things in here to share with you. Ah, I have what, what you can do when grieving and letting go are wrestling together. I've experienced, you know, particularly recently, um, a lot more grief. And I think that many, many of us have. And so I think it, that around letting go, are there all of these waves of grief and not all of them are ours. I think a lot of them are, are tuning into the collective and how much has been lost and how, how, how many structures have been lost and where are we finding our ground and the, the grieving of all of that, I think can also be that FACT is a wonderful way to be with that, but discerning when there's a wave of big sadness, I found that the most valuable thing I can do is to just ride the wave. And I like to ride it with sound and movement. So it's great to put on music and let yourself just you know, lie down on the floor and writhe around. Or if you're not a mover, but you're a drawer, you can draw it and paint it. And But turning it into creative expression for me has always been the most valuable way of riding the wave of grief. Because often just the, the crying gets you through that particular cycle but it's not really carrying what the meaning that you have attached. But when you let it turn into creative expression, whether it's 
clay or drawing or sculpture or making a soup or flowers or, uh, you know, or tearing up newspapers or uh, all of those different things allow you to express in a way that clears the pipes for you. When I let myself express fully, I always feel increased creativity uh, on the end of that wave. I always experience a, no, and it may, it may not be thoughts or a big project, but there's just this sense of, of uprising, sort of bubbling creativity or possibility. I get more space. And even if I'm still in the middle of grieving, I can feel the space in there too. So it's not just all blah. There are little tendrils of, you know, sprouts that are coming up that I can also give my attention to. Ah, I wrote down <clears throat> the other day, when letting go gets mixed up with leapfrogging over something that needs to be faced. So I think... Uh, a lot of people will counsel us to, oh, just let it, let it go. The most important thing that you could do is just let it go. doesn't matter. And uh, that leapfrogging will come back and kick you in the butt. Because if there's something there that you haven't faced and that you haven't really given your attention to, it literally can trip you up. Uh, you can literally bump into it, fall over it, you know, run into it. Uh, and I prefer to uh, be able to have what it is that uh, is calling for my attention to be friendly. And so the the um, using letting go as a recipe, I think often uh, leaps over particularly feelings, emotions, and incomplete communications. And so the... And how would you know that? How would you know? I'll come to you in just a second, Brian. How would you know that you've leapfrogged over something? For me, there's a, I, 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 and I invite you to tune into your signals from your body. For me, there's just, there's a little bit of a, it's like uh, uh, we had an earthquake here a couple of weeks ago and there were little aftershocks that went on for quite a long time. And, it, and it's like that, it's a little aftershock. It's a little, something is not quite aligned. There's a wobble. And um, so that lets me know mm, that I've made probably a flea move that uh, I've just fleed into letting go rather than really facing that there's more there to dive into and to be with before I'm willing to release. I was just seeing an image of a little boat that's got a string on it. And then, and then I've got the boat on, on the edge of the lake and I'm ready to let go of it, but I have a string on it so I can pull it back. Whoops, not quite ready. I thought it was ready, but whoops, not quite ready that uh, I can play with it until I actually feel a choice to let go. Uh, and since it's not very familiar to most of us, just getting acquainted with different ways of letting go just in itself, I think would be really valuable. Like, um, you know, letting go of balls. Like when I'm doing exercise weight training, one of the things I have this medicine ball and I can let go of it with a really big bam. Uh, so that letting go doesn't have to be, Oh, you know, just, you know, throwing the flowers in the lake, letting go could have some oomph to it as well. So letting yourself play with making letting go uh, kind of a creative project. What are all of the different ways that you could uh, play with a ball, play with, uh, you know, different kinds of objects and letting them go uh, with different kinds of flair uh, just opens up your letting go vocabulary. So Brian, you, where'd you go? <laughs> Did you still have a question or a comment? There you are. Yeah. Hey, um, that was my question. What does it feel like? And as you were talking through it, what I noticed is 
um, the flea really landed in the sense that it's almost like I'm trying to imagine what it would feel like if I'd let go and then I make this story up that it happened. And so it's all fine. Yeah. Cause you, it's all up here. Yeah. So that's a, such a great thing to catch. That, that was what I was getting to is that a lot of our letting go is just a flea move that we haven't really, we're sort of outrunning it. I notice and- that my head wants to come forward and it's, there's like something very specific in here. It's like my body is going back while my head wants to be forward. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. So See, that's your body was in waking up and that's something that you can play with and your body will keep speaking to you about, you know, what's the next step? What's the next thing to open up to so that you go on your own journey of letting go? Yeah, by listening to yourself. I'd love to try this medicine ball let go thing with you because what I feel when I do it, like it feels like there's anger. Yeah. And so it's like my unexpressed anger shows up and it's like, all right, great. There's time for me. But now I don't feel like I'm letting go anymore. Oh, right. Well, see, that's right, the, the thing. Shutting, you have a voice that says you should be letting go. I should go. be letting go. Yeah. Now, the, <laughs> the, the, the correct and spiritual thing to do would be to let go Absolutely. and to be angry. Oh, my, no, 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 no. So that's one of the reasons that I like to imagine the medicine ball, because a lot of why we don't let go is that we're still angry. Mm. And, but we judge anger, like we're not supposed to be angry. So anger is about a fundamental injustice. It's about a fundamental unfairness. And I know some of the hardest things for me to let go of have been unfairnesses. Like, you know, people really messed me over and, and I'm angry about it. And so doing what I would recommend and what I've done myself is F-A-C-T with my anger. You know where I feel it. Yeah, you know how nice that. Forward. You know how that's yeah. shaping me. You know, yeah. really letting myself be angry because you let yourself be angry for one. You know, just one. <sighs> you know, yes. so and if you don't have a medicine ball, I really recommend it. They're they're big, <laughs> big old motherfuckers, and you can go bam and just yeah have you get in touch with your anger because um i don't think anything is really going to change in society until we mobilize our anger and to encounter to counter fundamental injustices in the systems that are running us so uh, i really appreciate you bringing that up and the flea move i think is a very common one thank you katie you're very welcome great is that julia back there I can sort of see the rose, but not, yes, that is. Yes, it's me. Yes. So, <clears throat> of course, the timing of this class is perfect because <laughs> today, this morning, or this morning, I it was supposed to be the first um, week of a class called "Moving Through Loss" that I created as a creative expression to help me keep moving through the losses that I've experienced and. I integrated all sorts of your material and I was really excited <laughs> and no one showed up. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Yes. And so I've noticed throughout the day, I'm on the triangle. I'm like pointing fingers and I'm like, oh no, this is about me feeling a deeper sense of loss. And the reason I raised my hand though, is because when you were talking about ways to explore all the different ways we can let go. hmm I realized, oh, wait, our body gives us so many ways to let go. We cry tears out. We can spit things out of our mouth. We can vomit things out. We can sweat things out. We can lift our leg up like a dog and pee them out. You know, we can poop them out. And even though (laughs) this is crass, I was like, wait, this is actually fun to do it like this. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was wanted... also thinking, Julia, that um, this yeah. might be a great one to do FACT with, okay. because mm-hmm. my guess is that there's something in there between you wanting to offer this and you connecting with people and letting them know that you were offering it that got mm-hmm. that got missing in there. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can really feel your your joy in it and your, you know, excitement about sharing. And yeah, I've I've heard that too. Like, you know, what if I offer something and, you know, I I give a party and nobody comes. Right. (laughs) 
Yeah. 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 Okay. And then also, all, you know, all of the feelings around that and stuff. So I really appreciate yeah. you sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'll let you know how sure. it goes. <laughs> all right. Please. Oh, I'm noticing. Oh, my gosh. It's seven o'clock. Um, I have a couple things I want to say, and then um, I'll take your last two questions before we end. Um, down here, how presence and connection deepen with enhanced letting go. So as I've let go, what has taken the place of all the things I was holding on to is, is open flowing space like with no content and no debris and thoughts about who did what and why didn't they and scorekeeping and all that is gone and what takes the place of that is this availability for the next creative flow the next creative urge coming through and I find that so delicious and it's not content delicious it's body delicious it's a delicious experience so i wanted to just offer that to you because as you're practicing it's not all god letting go is really hard work it may be and the reward of open space and increased choice um uh, to me is really really valuable so let me just see if we've got um elijah do you have a question or a comment Yes, um, I was curious about like, I really loved what you said about like, um, sometimes I'm not ready to let go and, and, and letting the holding on being a conscious choice. I'm experiencing, I'm wanting clarity on that specifically for this job that I've been in and mental health customer service that I'm wanting to transition out of. And part of me just wants to let go and like leave right now. I, it's like, I have $40,000 in retirement savings. It's not the most prudent thing I, I could do, but I, I could just jump ship and yeah. then get out right now. I could. Mm -hmm. And I'm like wondering how you can tell when the, I'm not ready to let go is coming from resonance or, or a fear-based justification. Um, I don't think it matters. If you're still having it, I'm not ready to let go. No matter where it's coming from, you've still got it. Mm. So uh, you could play with holding on and letting go and holding on and letting go with the thing. You could even put it over in the corner and then have to go find it and go, oh, where's that thing again that I was still holding on? So you could literally let yourself play with it because mostly we're going to be and I was hearing that you're doing it from an intellectual basis. And I invite you to do it more from a play-based, mm -hmm. you know, like you can make a little model of the, you know, or, or, a, uh, or, or a drawing or something about the job and how the job feels to you right now. Like I'm just thinking of a newspaper that's all rolled up. <laughs> Uh, and and then it's like, when, it's like wet, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a wet newspaper, you know, that's sticking to everything, and so that you you literally let yourself play with it, at and letting the play inform you, yeah, rather than the should, because you know the uh, my uh, my dad was one of the pros and cons guys, you know, he had the list of here's why we should and here's why we shouldn't and here's what's good and here's what's not good about it. And you still have to choose, <laughs> you know, yeah. the list is not going to choose. And so I, how I know that I'm ready is that uh, there's a, there's an opening mm. and there's a, an expansion and there's an expansion in sort of a three dimensional all the way around expansion, not just a, Oh, I'm going to dash forward or, you know, I'm going to handle this with my head. So that's for me. And I invite you to find out what are your, mm. you know, really unequivocal signals. What are your unequivocal signals? Got it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And Deborah, did, oh, let's see. Are you still there, Deborah? Yes. I was taken with your comment about forgiveness has been contaminated. And I was wondering about the two processes. Are they mutually exclusive? Oh, no, they can. 
Yeah, well, and one from one to the other. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, FACT is designed that you can stop anywhere and do something else. Like you do, could okay. do breathing. You could do a persona interview. You could you could befriend your feelings. You could mm -hmm. take a walk around the block. So it is a. Yeah. It's kind of like a maypole that you can dance around. I, I need to learn that dance because I had a friend that I had felt betrayed from and I said, I really need to step back. And yeah. instantly she was emailing me books on forgiveness. <laughs> and I felt like judged by our little group that my yeah. failure to forgive. And I thought like, if I forgive her, does that mean I have to loop her back or <laughs> bring her back? You know, that, um, those are legitimate questions. So a lot of, you know, forgiving is like tossing it out rather than what's there for me to learn from this? What does this remind me of? Is this a, an older wound that's being triggered by this one? What are the feelings that I haven't felt? So it's uh, letting go, I consider really a journey. And it's a journey in that I would like you to, and me to have the most choice about. So all of that stuff, I call that exogenous world. That's the world telling you how you should be right. and how, how you feel and how you want to move is unique and, uh, and your choice. Thank you. I'm yeah. looking Thank forward you. to that F-A-C-T. Yeah. Well, we can, thing, um, the, Michelle, could you put it in the chat? for people so they can grab it from there. That would be great. Yeah, Thank I did you. that earlier and I'll, I'll put it there again. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, Michelle is great about doing that. Yeah. All right, let's just come back to the gallery uh, again so that we can all see each other or most of us. And I'd like you, we're going to be letting go of this a gathering in just a second here. So first I'd like you to hold on to it. Like, Oh, just, Oh, are we, Oh, it's, uh, it's over already. Oh, I just, I had one more thing. I want to do. And I'd like you to see if you would be willing to let go of it in some, a new way for you. And thank you so much for playing with me and for um, taking the time to consider this really, really important area of, you know, letting go so that we can make space for the next thing. So mwah, thank you until next time. Yeah. Many blessings <laughs> and lots thank of fun you. letting go. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank good to see you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.